I wanted to tell you a quick story about a lady that I just started working with this past week. She's an 84 year old woman who's had vertigo for years. Now, of course, she's seen countless providers over those years, but for some reason, nobody has been able to make even the slightest change in her vertigo. Now, remember, vertigo is defined as the subjective perception of rotational or translational movement in the absence of an external stimulus. So these people often feel like they're spinning. And as we've discussed before in this video, the most common reason that one would experience vertigo is because of something called BPPV. BPPV stands for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And basically that's when you have these little crystals, which are called otoconia that can become dislodged within your inner ear and they can then contribute to the perception of vertigo. Now in that other video that we just referenced, we discussed how there are six different canals within your inner ear, three on each side. And these crystals can find their way into any of these canals. And as you can imagine, when these crystals are within a different canal, there's a different treatment application that one must undergo in order to fix it. And the main point of that video was to say that there are certain canals that are more common than others in which those crystals can become dislodged. And so for the average provider that you would see when you're experiencing vertigo, typically it'd be a physical therapist, for the most part, they know how to perform the one maneuver that's associated with the most common presentation. That seems logical, right? Because according to this article, BPPV can develop in any of the three semicircular canals on each side. However, the posterior canal variant is by far the most common and they reference it to be between 80 to 90%. So if I'm a doctor and I can learn how to perform the therapy that would alleviate vertigo in 80 to 90% of patients, I'd say I'm doing pretty good, right? But what if you're one of the people that fall into the other 10 or 20%? Now, that's the unfortunate reality of the woman that I just started working with. So in that last video that I've been referencing, we discussed how these crystals can end up in any of the six canals and the importance of knowing how to do maneuvers that cater to each unique presentation. And now I just wanna dive a little bit deeper and discuss the two main types of BPPV, those those being what they call canalithiasis and cupulolithiasis. I know, big words, but let's walk through it. Canal lithiasis is exactly what we've been talking about. Those crystals get loose and they make their way into one of the six canals or maybe even multiple of the six canals and they're freely floating. And so now when I move my head, the fluid within that canal has a little bit more weight to it because there's more junk within that canal. Now, why this is important is because imagine this, there's that canal and it has the parachute at the end of it. So now when I move, the fluid hits that, hits that parachute and based upon how hard it hits that parachute will then relay a signal to the brain of how exactly how fast I just moved my head. But if I've got a little bit of junk in the trunk, now when I move my head, let's say I'm only moving 20 degrees per second, since those crystals are, are in there, they hit that parachute and it hits it a little bit harder and it registers at 40 degrees per second. This is what leads to the perception of vertigo because if I'm moving at, let's use 20 degrees per second to the right, all the muscles in my neck and the joints will register that I move 20 degrees per second to the right. On top of that, my visual system, so long as I can actually see, will register the environment moving at 20 degrees per second. But if I've got BPPV, now my inner ear registers at 40 degrees per second. So there becomes this dichotomy of information and that is canal lithiasis. Hopefully that makes sense. Canal lithiasis means the crystals are within the canal. Now on the flip side, cupulolithiasis, which is something that is less common. And again, remember most providers will know how to perform the most common therapeutic maneuver, which is not this, but with cupulolithiasis, the particulate matter, those crystals become adherent to the cupula itself. And this cupular loading renders the, sense of the system sensitive to gravitational forces and the resulting alterations in cupular deflection lead to pathological perceptions of motion. So what does that mean? I told you that there is that parachute, right? And when the fluid within that canal hits that parachute, it registers how quickly you moved your head. Well, that parachute is called the cupula and these crystals can adhere to that cupula. So now let's think about it. These crystals are now not just floating within the canal, but they're actually stuck on the parachute. So again, if we just try to think logically between canal lithiasis and cupulolithiasis, they're different mechanisms, which means there probably should be a different treatment, uh, tr different treatment applied, right? So for this woman, what we ended up doing was one of the maneuvers that she had done in the past, which is called a Seamount maneuver, but I coupled that with, what, with some vibration on the back of her skull right behind her ear. 
And in the literature, you'll find that there's some conflicting information as to if placing vibration on the skull during one of these repositioning maneuvers is effective or not. But at least in my head, it makes a lot of sense for this type of presentation because for this particular woman, she's already done so many of these maneuvers before with absolutely no benefit. So I made the decision to do the maneuver while using vibration because remember, those crystals are stuck on that parachute. So if while doing the maneuver, I can utilize vibration to shake those crystals loose and knock them off of the cupola, hopefully we'll see a positive outcome. And guess what? In that one visit, we were able to get her dizziness to go from a 10 out of 10. In fact, when I initially laid her back for the start of the maneuver, she, stayed, she said that she rated her dizziness at a 16 out of 10. But as we continued on and added vibration, her dizziness came all the way down to a five out of 10. Now that's pretty cool, but it also kind of breaks my heart a little bit because this poor woman has been struggling for years, feeling like the world is spinning around her for years, seeing countless providers. And the only thing that she's come out of that is with feeling even more dizziness. Now this just goes to show how when you can niche down and be more specific with your treatment applications, things can happen really quick. So next time when this woman comes in, I'll probably do the same maneuver one more time. And then since this has been going on for a long time, we'll probably then have to do some vestibular recalibration exercises and hopefully she'll be good as new, but I'll make a whole separate video on what exactly that means.